I don't have any yum, but I have Yoshi's. Do you want a Yoshi? What's a Yoshi? What the heck? When it comes to 3D platformer indie games, there's nothing like scampering around as a rat on a nice morning in the latest upcoming rodent light. In A Rat's Life by development duo Jeremy and Julian, you follow a rat who makes their way through a crumbling society, going undercover as a working class rodent and thwarting disturbing conspiracies. Something happened to your beloved siblings who work for Terrasol, a cheese hunting empire, so you gear up, learn new rodent skills, fight enemies, and explore an interconnected map to find out what happened to your family. During my playthrough, I couldn't help but stare off into the scenery. From the bougie and abandoned apartments, to the slums, to the large factories and carnivals, the scenery subtly tells the story of the rat world, and something about the dilapidated and practically steampunk design or aesthetic really appeals to me. But it's this environment mixed with the characters and interactions that flush out the game. Some notable characters are Paul with his scheming false positive vibe, the very selfish and entitled mayor's son, and the naked mole rat who after living for such a long time has seen some sh The dialogue and story are well thought out, comedic conversations and especially the hidden goodies were hilarious, so I guarantee you won't be without laughs in this game. It isn't overdone though, and there's a good balance of serious moments, including good suspense and surprisingly horror. For it being a fictional world, the story makes sense so far, and all of these are a testament to Julian the writer's abilities. Speaking of abilities, you have a couple within the demo. With a rodent sense of smell, you have the ability to sense trouble or find things that you need. And of course you can crawl through pipes, climb up walls, and bury through them as a rat. I also found something on Twitter which suggests that rat martial arts doesn't seem to be an impossibility for the future game. Moving on to gameplay, there's steady pacing between the storyline and objectives, so I never felt like the game placed too much emphasis on one action. The skills aren't without purpose and aid in the game's progressions, and I can't wait to see where Pieces games will take the upcoming challenges. Truly though, where this game shines brightest is within its fantastic world building and storytelling. Although the minigames are a great add-on, the magic lies in the world exploration and engaging storyline. On to areas of improvement, I noticed while scurrying around that there was one plank where I got slightly stuck on briefly before I found my way through it, but there was nothing game breaking of course. What I would like to see is an exploration of the skills and new challenges that test the player. For example, the fighting mechanic that was hinted at. Good games will increase the difficulty or add some twists and turns as you progress. Another great example of this concept is the mini game in the carnival where you need to grab as many gems as you can. I kept coming back to try and beat my record, went off on a different goal to find a necessary item, and going back was very rewarding when I was finally able to beat it. But maybe this can be done in other ways, like for platforming maybe you could swing off of things with your tail. On another thing I would like to see, the game hooked me in with its lighthearted and humorous atmosphere to shift into something more suspenseful, serious, and terrifying in a good way of course. It seems like a no-brainer, but I hope that Pieces Games explores more of that horror or suspense aspect of what rats experience, like snakes, humans, and of course, cats. What is your role? I'm the dev, so I make all programming, 3D animations, music, sound effects, concepts, etc. And marketing, I guess. What is your inspiration? My inspiration comes from retro rareware such as Banjo-Kazooie, Conker, Donkey Kong Country, Nintendo in general, and Zeldas. And from the last decade, Undertale is very inspiring. In cinema, David Lynch. In music, other than the composers from the games above, I really like the work of Metronomy, especially earlier albums. What has been the main challenge so far? The biggest challenge for me is environment and level design, figuring out the space. Is this the main project you're working on, or are there others? 100% into this project. What are you looking forward to with this project, and what details would you like your audience to know that's not given in any social media posting so far? After the demo ends, when you start your job as a cheese hunter, the game is going to start to be more open and less linear. There will be a duality between being a good employee versus uncovering secrets among the different biomes. 
The game takes place in an abandoned zoo populated by cats and other animals, and we hope it's going to be a good blend of exploration, action, and story with a metroidvania aspect. How did you get started with game development, and what skills, hobbies, interests helped you start? We, Julian was doing some games too at the time, made our first games with Click Team software Click and Play when I was like 9 or 10 years old. Then I always had those three main hobbies in parallel, music, movie making, and game dev slash 3D, and worked on many personal projects of all sorts. I studied in 3D and visual effects for cinema, worked a bit in that industry, then went to freelance. I started to learn programming in Unity around 2017, and a rat's life project started around August 2021. What lessons or skills did you take from your short movie Motocrasticot to help in the creation of this project? I had been working a lot as a freelancer and I was getting bored by it, so the main thing about this project was to make something that would reflect all I had learned until now. Something more personal and also to be able to finish it. It's easy to start many projects, but it's hard to finish them. So apart from some technical learnings, it was more about getting my project done, which is very important in game development too. Knowing how to scope, still struggle with that a bit. What is your role? I'm the narrative designer slash writer. What is your inspiration? I'm really inspired by my surroundings and the Nintendo 64 games I used to play as a kid. Most notably classic Rareware games like Banjo-Kazooie and Conker's Bad Fur Day. I'm also inspired by TV shows. I love BoJack Horseman and Mr. Robot, and the writing of thinkers that have an influence on my life in general, like Paul B. Preciado and Michel Foucault. What has been the main challenge? For now, I would say finding game mechanics that could carry the story, but the game is still in its early stage of development so challenges will probably still continue to arise. Is this the main project you're working on, or are there others? It's the main project I'm working on right now. How did you get started with writing, and what skills, hobby, interests helped you start? I started writing as a kid, but I started doing it more seriously during adulthood. Reading helped a lot with it, and being curious in general. What lessons did you take from your novels Pas besoin d'ennemis and Vos voix ne nous en attendons plus to help in this project? It is a quite different writing process as I didn't have to use my imagination as much to write my books, which are very autobiographical. To write A Rat's Life, I must get back to a more playful kind of writing, which involves world building and that is something I haven't done since childhood. But I think writing two books gave me more confidence in my writing skills, so I'm willing to take more risks and that seems to be paying off for now, seeing the reaction of the few people who played day one. A Rat's Life is a fantastic story-based game with a well-crafted environment and rewarding progression. From the game's quick-witted humor and fun minigames to the suspenseful stealth and world exploration elements, this has definitely made it on my list of upcoming indie games to keep an eye on, and I'll put links to the game if you want to keep it on your list too. For more indie game reviews, please consider subscribing. The goal of this channel is to bring more attention to smaller game development teams and solo developers. Your support encourages me to create more content like this. It's funny because my last two reviews happen to be about frogs, so... If you'd like to take a look at those, they'll be on the side for you. And for other indie reviews, keep it on Indie Hero.